The sounds of Formula One. It's a strident symphony. This is the music of friction and heat and speed. And yet there's a sound in all this that can soothe. A sound, a name. Ferrari. In 64 years, they've won more titles than anyone else. It is Ferrari's biggest triumph yet. Ferrari, the cars that make Formula One sing. But their tune has changed. In recent years, a runner-up. For Ferrari, it is now time to set the record straight. For a new beat is pounding. Formula One is about to change beyond recognition. There is urgency to add to the age-old imperative. Ferrari needs to win. Aerodynamics all change. There will be lighter loads of new ranges of fuel. So, like new Formula One for everyone. Above all, there will be new engines. The naturally aspirated 2.4-litre V8 engine replaced by a turbocharged 1.6-litre V6 powertrain complete with energy recovery systems. A revolution of cutting-edge advances and setbacks. With unprecedented access, this is a story of perseverance, of passion, seen at first hand like never before. We still have a lot of things to do. A drama of flesh and blood and science. We were crazy two years ago thinking that we would have had this power unit running. It's a story with a home, a home deep in northern Italy, the land of Verdi, a countryside of the finest food and also a place of the finest engineering, where a racing car like no other is being built in the Ferrari town of Maranello. This is what will power the dream to win again, what the past three years have all been about. It's in Maranello that the story begins, with a birth. This is the day the new V6 Ferrari engine will be heard for the very first time. Day turns to night, the dawn of a new age at dusk. To be in here, you have to belong. This is for close family members only. The countdown to the future. When we fired up for the first time uh, the new engine, uh, the V6, on the dyno was uh, a special moment for, uh, for all the team. I remember that I've called uh, our chairman to attend to this moment. And I remember that uh, behind the, the screen of, of the dyno, there were a lot of engineers that were waiting for that moment because at the end of the day, is, that was, and it is actually now, their life. So that was the start of a new journey, the start of a new project, the start of a new hope for a lot of people. There is a world championship to complete in the old car. Sebastian Vettel and Red Bull are dominating Formula One again. For the Ferrari drivers, it is a grueling season. Everyone in the Ferrari family is suffering. There are a few words to summarize 2013. We are not happy at all about the result. It has been quite a season where we would like to forget as soon as possible. Being Ferrari, you, you have to win. Second position is not position for Ferrari. Fernando Alonso, the Spanish driver, is in his fourth season with Ferrari. He's twice a world champion with Renault. With Ferrari, 11 race wins, three times a runner-up, but not yet a champion. We won the first couple of Grand Prix. We were on the podium at the beginning. So the first half of the season uh, was, was all right. 
And then, uh, unfortunately, for two main reasons, there was uh, one reason connected to the fact that we were not able to develop the car in the right way. Secondly, with the change of the configuration of the tyres has affected our performance. And unfortunately, was, uh, we went in the second half of the season in a very difficult situation. This year, uh, we had some, some problems with the tyres, and I think in Ferrari, we are struggling a little bit more with the last uh, uh, construction on the tyres that uh, slowed down a little bit our performance. But, uh, as I said, it's the same for everybody, so it's up to us to, to do a little bit better. In difficult moments, you need to build up uh, with a strong basis to look ahead, and uh, this is what I believe we have done. 2014 is a, a big challenge for, for all the teams. It's a big change in the regulations. Uh, the turbo engine come back for next year. There are some other uh, aerodynamic uh, effects that um, will change maybe the order of the, of the cars, so you know, we have until uh, March next year to put all the parts together and, uh, you know, finger cross will be good enough. Come here. Come here. Look there. Look there. Good. Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. Easy competition. Off he goes to finish the season with the V8 engine. Three more races, one podium finish. Far from the desert of Abu Dhabi, Maranello. And here at Ferrari headquarters, it's the new car that is concentrating minds. A meeting of the development team working on the new powertrain. The science of speed and winning is their life, but they hide the pressures well. But pressure there most certainly is. These brightest engineering minds are in a flat-out race against time. The new Formula One season is only four months away. Quite busy, as you might imagine. They, we have a brand new engine, brand new powertrain, uh, really, I would say, cutting edge technology. Next year, we'll have a very big change in the regulation from a 2.4 litre naturally aspirated engine uh, V8. We will pass to a 1.6 litre turbocharged engine with a much, much bigger curse, around 160 horsepower. Currently, 2013, the Acker system give an advantage of three to four tenths per lap. We'll be close to the three seconds per lap next season, so it's really 10 times more powerful. One thing is getting the engine to work and be as powerful as you want it to be. The other thing is there's many, many systems on the car next year. So there's the engine system, the systems to look after all the electrical and the hybrid part of the car, which need to be as small and as light as possible. It's a Formula One car. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no room for a suitcase, shall we say. It's really packaged to the maximum. Trying to put all that together and learn how to make it work together, which is not benign. That's been quite challenging. Reliability is playing a key role. Next year will be even more critical because each driver will have only five power unit for the complete season, making engine life almost double what we are doing right now. On top of this, FIA put a limit of 100 kilos of fuel for the complete race. You may imagine that with the same 100 kilos we should race in Melbourne and we should race in Monaco. And typically, these two tracks have completely different total fuel consumption. So this means next year, the strategy of fuel consumption during the race may become critical in some races. The fuel is becoming really very important for the performance of the engine and finally of the car, even more than what it was in the past. So it means that here the objective will be to reduce more than 30% fuel consumption compared to what we are doing today. One is very interesting and challenging being a Formula One engine development guy, and the other thing is it's very relevant for the future, so it's particularly satisfying. But uh, we're here day and night, shall we say, so, uh, so the old cup of tea helps. I think so. the fact that we could start from the beginning, together with the Shell, to design a power system and the fuel and the lubricant with this new concept has been really rewarding and a really fantastic uh, technical experience. This is the work not just of the last few months, this is the work of uh, almost three years of the complete team and uh, hopefully we we will prove that we have done a good job. I think what we are facing at the moment is the most important challenge we had in the last at least 20 years in Formula One. 
Seas is really a stressful process. To manage the Maranello's stresses, an Englishman may arm himself with a cup of tea. Dave Salters is a Liverpool lad in northern Italy, fully aware that he is part of something very special here. There's a lot of pressure in what we do, and you feel a lot of responsibility working for Ferrari. Um, I go for Sunday lunch, and if the race is on the Sunday lunch, you know, you, people are all looking at the television, and uh, it's, a, it's a national... It's an institution here, Ferrari. So it's a national team, effectively. So you feel responsibility for it, but uh, I take it in a very pleasurable and proud way, really. You know, we're all very proud to work for Ferrari. So it's, uh, one day you look back for sure and uh, think, wow, that was quite exciting. Three quarters of all Formula One cars are designed and manufactured in Motorsport Valley in the heart of England. Ferrari defends the place of Italy in the history of motorsport with passion and devotion. Around here, you can find history at every turn. If you look here, there's a 250 LM. Wow. That is about 20 million euros worth of cars out on the side of the road. <laughs> so... <laughs> You don't see that very often in Northampton, to be honest. <laughs> I think that's my favourite Ferrari, to be honest. Maybe uh, you asked about my inspiration for Ferrari. I once saw a documentary where there was a 250LM, which is that car, going through the fields of France, and it has a fantastic V12 engine, which, when, when you hear it, makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. So uh, it's a shame that guy's uh, stopped at the moment, but uh, there we are. That's quite, uh, quite nice. Shell's technical center near Hamburg in Germany. For every engine, there must be fuel and oils. The latest blend is U40. Tests on this 40th version of the race fuel blend were at first encouraging, but now it's causing the engine to misfire. These are the growing pains the engineers have got used to over the last three years. They will face challenges at every turn, but these latest results are a concern. From what we do with the performance testing, we were seeing misfires in two or three hours, and that more or less in the long run looked to be about three hours, so you could say it was six. But um, it's quite variable. It depends what we do, because sometimes it's three hours, and uh, the best record yet was probably last Friday or something, but it was 40 minutes. So 40 minutes? 40 minutes. So that is not usable. So I would say we've got a reasonable challenge ahead of us in the next weeks because U40 is great, but it's not braceable. We've just heard in the meeting that um, the latest fuel that we've been working on with Ferrari gives great performance, but the durability just isn't quite there, which is, I think, in all honesty, a little bit disappointing um, and frustrating. We've put a lot of effort into this latest fuel. It's built on a lot of different um, technologies that we've been uh, working on developing out for some time now. So it is frustrating, but uh, that's the nature of Formula One, really. We've just got to pick ourselves up, move forward, um, try and look at what we can improve, uh, and, and really try and achieve that within the very, very <laughs> tight timeline that we're working towards now. Technically, we need to have finished all this by Christmas, yeah. which is, yeah. sounds impossible, to be honest, yeah. right now, but... Um, they won't move the start of the racing season, unfortunately. <laughs> we have asked many times and they just refuse. Fry would like that solved within two or three weeks, but realistically, that's a tough tough call, tough ask. So the backup fuels, we got to get them in place and tested by Ferrari just up before Christmas. So it's, um, yeah, all hands to the decks. While the rest of the world is enjoying Christmas, for us often it is the busiest part of the year, and especially the case this year with the um, new engine and, and the new challenges.
If there are December nights that dampen the spirits, there are others before Christmas that quicken the pulse. Ferrari's proud history and the future. Five million euros worth of virtual racing, two tons of simulator. Tonight, the driver will be Fernando Alonso. It's the first time the Spaniard has eased himself behind the wheel of the new car, albeit a virtual version, under the watchful eye of his race engineer, Andrea Stella. The simulator allows the driver to get used to all the new systems and procedures. There is so much that will be new in the season ahead, a season of momentous change. There is a mountain of data to be collected, sifted through and analyzed. But this is also about the touch and feel of the driver. Everything in front of him and behind him is different. Will the engineering and the design marry with the human who must control them? So very new is all this, that these are nerve-jangling times. This is a totally new driving experience, from the instrument panel to the car's straight-line performance to its cornering. Fernando will have to learn how to manage his fuel in a car carrying around 30% less, how and when to use the new energy recovery systems that will improve lap times by as much as three seconds, new tires, changes to the aerodynamics front and rear, so much to learn and in so little time. They have just over a month before they head to Jerez in Spain and drive for real in testing. very different so it's nice to be back and uh, try to share some ideas with the engineers obviously we need to, to learn and we need to, to practice a lot of things and uh, we are in a very uh, first part of the, of the program and uh, as I said it's nice to to be involved in this uh, whole uh, uh, new thing no? because it's uh, like new Formula One for everyone. Simulator is always uh, hard, uh, especially because the, the hours that you spend there is uh, a little bit uh, more than the car. You don't lose time to, to make changes, everything is uh, on the computer, so you keep running all the, all the day without uh, problems, uh, which is nice, but uh, it's, it's, it's hard. Simulator is, is mentally also very stressful because, you know, with all the images and uh, with the 3D, etc., when you go back uh, and you see all the light, uh, it's even hurting yourself, you know, because you are very dark inside. So, yeah, we complete more or less the program. Um, happy with uh, some of the, the results that we had, and uh, uh, as I said, nice. Fernando's long day is not yet done. From simulator to helicopter, and from Maranello to Rome for a partner event. There is commitment to the cause at all levels here. It's the advice given everywhere to tired drivers on long journeys that they take a break. And so it is that even at Ferrari, they stop in their race to be ready and have a party. It's a famous tradition 
the Christmas lunch for the 700 workers at Marinella. The family gathers. The elders, the sponsors, technical partners, race drivers, senior engineers. Piero Ferrari, son of Enzo, the founding father of all this. It's a chance to look back, but above all this Christmas, to look ahead. Putting what has gone and what is to come into context is the job of the chairman, Luca di Montezemolo. The chairman has a speech to make to the workforce at Marinello, a message of encouragement, even if reference has to be made to the sorry business of not winning again. From there, though, the serious business gives way to a Ferrari fantasy world. And of course, Father Christmas wears red. Ferrari red. The Scuderia of Santa Clauses. The new year in England. Shell's F1 technical team have been working flat out on the race fuels and oils. When there's a chance to relax, here's what one petrochemical expert gets up to. So this is one Malik sports, sports racing car in amongst with all the junk. <laughs> as a Formula One fan, as a petrol head from the start, I mean, I remember when I first got involved in motor racing myself, I went down to the, uh, round the corner to a friend who had a racing car in his, in his garage and, and used to look at his autosports and you see pictures of Fiorano and the Ferrari going around the test track there and people at the bottom of the track um, by the bridge towards the Montana restaurant we know that and I remember looking at those and thinking oh that's fascinating and I, little did I believe that probably 30 years or something like that later I would be actually out there myself inside the track and inside Ferrari so I mean it's been fascinating. Coming back from the races and uh, dri coming down the driveway and just getting home is a really nice feeling actually um, coming away from all the hustle and bustle and the, the busyness and the fast pace it's nice to come away here and just decompress and relax a bit, spend time with the family. It is a perfect getaway, really. Have a nice walk. I've looked back over the last year, uh, my first year doing the job, and there are a few things that really stick in my memory. One of them is the day I first got my uniform uh, with my name on it. Uh, that was in absolutely incredible. Uh, and I think Every time you pull on the red uniform, representing Shell and Ferrari, there's, yeah, it does feel quite special. I honestly, I struggle to talk, to articulate how, how, how much this all means to me, to be honest. The problem, the problem with garages, they never have enough room so, in them. It always manages to fill up the available space. So unfortunately, the garage is not quite like a, a Formula One. Um, pit or the, or, the, or the garage back in the, the workshops back in Marinello, it's quite different. <laughs> the, the other end of the racing scale. Racing is racing, it's the same mentality th throughout, you know. There is some trophies there, up there, <laughs> it's a bit tarnished these days, but there, there are several championships I won in the, um, in the mid-90s. I actually won a, a national championship three years on the run. Having a victory in Melbourne will be amazing because it will be quite 
very indicative that the massive amount of work that we, we've done with Ferrari and we are doing in Shell will have been worthwhile and will have actually achieved something. So, yeah, hopefully it will be there. In Maranello, the return of the last man to drive a Ferrari to a world title. Kimi Raikkonen of Finland, making a slow entrance. Not at this spot. I even didn't manage to target him there. <laughs> Day one back at work here, and he's straight into the simulator. The world champion of 2007, back for the brand new age about to start. Uh, it's nice to come back uh, and start working uh, with Ferrari again. It's more busy maybe because the new, uh, slightly new rules, but uh, all seems to be going nice along and uh, we should take it. Testing in southern Spain is approaching fast. It's the final sprint in Maranello before the drivers put the new Ferrari through its paces. A brand new F14T. Day and night the work goes on. It is a question of completing pre-testing projects, applying the finishing touches, including a message to the millions of Ferrari fans worldwide. Dear friends, as every year, a day like today is a very important one. I'm confident, I'm confident because uh, we have uh, a strong team and I think that we have all the ingredients to be uh, successful. Now it's time to win. The last of the final touches in the long, hugely complex process, the livery. Famously red, romantically rosso, 100% pure Ferrari. Ferrari were there at the very start of Grand Prix racing. Theirs is the richest history in motorsport. The F14T, the hope for the future. This is a huge moment, the end of a three-year journey. This, the end product of so much devotion. It's an occasion charged with pride and nervousness. It needs a calming presidential touch. Così non va bene. Quindi dobbiamo rivederla tutta. There's no escaping the realization that this is a huge leap into the unknown. There will be three opportunities for pre-season testing, once in Jerez and twice in Bahrain to scrutinize the performance and reliability of this, the most technically advanced Formula One car ever made by Scuderia Ferrari. 12 days after final testing comes the first Grand Prix of the 2014 season in Melbourne, Australia. After five years without a world championship title, will this be the car? Time to be on the move. Time for the team to head for Jerez de la Frontera in Spain. A new chapter begins, and in it there is time for contemplation. But work is never far away. For the team's deputy engine and electronics director, Mattia Binotto, testing does not apply only to the new car. These are testing times for the engineers, who have had to respond to such a radical overhaul of Formula One's regulations. So much to do, so little time. First of all, we have very little testing compared to years ago, because 
only 12, 12 total days of testing before the first race with a completely new regulation is really very little. And the days are very long. Uh, people are sleeping one or two hours at the moment per night. There's a lot to, to be learned, a lot to be discovered, a lot to be, to be done. So the fact that it's so, so new, so different and so complex makes things even more difficult. And, uh, from now to, to the first race, there will be a lot to sort out and uh, to find out. So it's, um, it's really challenging. It's, it's a huge job. It's really a, a big effort. No stop. We will have rest later in the year. Eleven thirty that night, the car arrives at the circuit. This silence will not last much longer. It's setup day, the day before trials at speed on the circuit. We've made a lot of progress with U40 type of fuels, but we've come a long way with understanding the problems, fixing them, uh, and we've got a couple of options up our sleeve for um, similar type fuels, so it's looking pretty promising. Trying to make it all work together has been the biggest challenge, and I think you'll find that's the biggest challenge in the car. Trying to get any one of those things to work is not so bad. Trying to get them all to work together in the correct way at the right time is, um, is the challenge. Later in the garage, there is a gathering, the firing up of the engine. The team don't like what they hear or what they see. A fire in the engine bay. There'll be no sleeping this long night. The glamour of Formula One. More often, this is the reality. Okay, morning everyone. Where do we normally start? Weather. Weather is looking like it's going to be dry all day. It was incredibly important that Jerez to run. People wanted to run. Because um, Jerez is the opportunity to find the problems that you still have some time to fix. We do only the first installation with 70% fuel load. For the engineers, the car's first run strips them of their cool-headed detachment. I had to be in Jerez. I had to be there the first time at the first lap, but I was scared. OK, radio check, radio check. See you going to corner one. Yeah, radio check. When we have uh, so many new parts running for the first time, the likelihood to stop the car are very high. To Kimi Räikkönen goes the honour of driving the F14T for its first laps. Stop the car, stop the car now, now, stop the car, stop the car. I heard on the headphone that we had to stop the car. The first thought was, uh, I hope that we have not damaged the car. You know, the car is one, some parts are coming at the last moment, so I was really scared to have damaged the car. Second, I hope I have not damaged the engine. Uh, so Kiwi's just stopped on the track. The team saw a potential problem in telemetry data which might have indicated low oil pressure. So as a precaution, they stopped the car, Kimmy jumped out and they brought, brought everything back to the, to the garage. 
We've taken an oil sample, run some wear metal analysis to make sure everything's OK. Um, good news is that everything is OK, so it's likely um, a, a faulty sensor or signal, which the team are working on now. With the problem fixed, the car starts to rack up the track miles, providing the engineers with invaluable data. OK, so box uh, on the pistol position. There will be feedback from the drivers to the team. The greater the number of laps, the more the data and the feedback flow in, the faster the car will go. OK, Kimi, uh, power unit drivability feeling? I mean, it wasn't too bad, but from those, uh, the, the biggest issues was definitely from second gear, shifting to third gear. This one is front. Before it was also rear. There's always pressure on Ferrari to win a world championship, clearly because uh, they're the most historic team in Formula One and they've got the biggest fan base around the world. You, know, you go into a grandstand, even here at testing, you have a look, there are more red caps and t-shirts in the grandstand than there are of any other single team. So there's a lot of expectation on, on Ferrari. They've come so close in the last sort of four or five years, Fernando Alonso finishing second in the championship. So they've come so close and I wouldn't be at all surprised if this change in regulation is, is really what they need and what they can take advantage of to win the championship again. So on the engine, we have a long run engine fitted, 630 kilometers done so far. Formula One without Ferrari wouldn't be the same. Okay, the radio check. Okay, okay. This is the history of motor racing. Ferrari is more important alone than all the other teams together. Ferrari needs to win. They need to win races, they need to win championships, because their vocation is the win, not to compete. I think uh, one of the keys to the start of this season is, is trying to get to the end of the race, which is, is not a given. It's all complex, all new. You know, the cars have only just run, and we're weeks away from Melbourne. Basically, I think of what you should do in six months, you have to do in three, or even less. Flat out here, flat out in Maranello, that is uh, the spirit of Ferrari. Uh, we have assembled all the car, the power unit, the air system at the very, 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 very last minute. So it has been up to the, really, the last second to put all together and to move to Eretz. I've been around in Formula One a long time, but this, magnitude of change in technology I've not seen before and I think you could feel you could feel the atmosphere in the garage. I felt different compared last year even in full throttle. I have to say that uh, when we were there the first day in Jerez uh, then we were a little bit nervous because we knew that it was a very difficult and complicated job and uh, I was proud to see that after the you know, the, the end of the, the, at the end of the test, uh, everything was, was all right. It has been a very tough test in Jerez. Uh, we were expecting this, but we have collected what we wanted. We have run consistently. We have collected a lot of information that we could not draw just running on the dyno. We got some important feedback from our drivers. So I would say the first test in Jerez has been great for Ferrari and a lot of work to be prepared for the next test in Bahrain. After the frenzied week of Hareth, a chance to unwind, a chance for a little nostalgia. Kimi Raikkonen in a warehouse of heritage. Ah, it's that one, yeah, yes. Um, I, I mean, it looks... Uh, the color was a little bit different, like we can see uh, on that here from the previous years. But I mean, I think it looks nice car because it has all those uh, details that we used to have, and uh, I mean the rules were a little bit different. So 
uh, was a very good car. Uh, that had a good good races with it, so uh, well, it looks nice. The old compared with the new. I wouldn't say that it's so much different. Obviously, in different engine, different rules, uh, slightly different tyres, but uh, I wouldn't say that this is so much different on what we're going to have this year. Now we are here in Maranello after Herets, and uh, we are quite lucky that there is few weeks, more than two weeks, to, to the next test in Bahrain. We are counting down the days towards the start of the championship. We are preparing tests, we are preparing the races. Uh, the, the action is incredible because uh, there, there is never enough time to be ready. It's all becoming really true now. So you think, oh, OK, Australia's in, and then you look at the calendar and you go, oh, wow, <laughs> it's weeks. It's, uh, it's flat out, as you can imagine. Obviously, people are very busy here yeah, at the factory to, to solve all, all the small, small issues and uh, improve the electronic side, where well, it's the most, uh, most uh, trickiest with the new rules. There is a, a list of action that are needed on the actual car. There are a lot of activity that is going on uh, for the development of the car, medium and long term. So we need to make sure that what we've got will work properly. But what's the next step? It's con continuous evolution at the moment, really. I think we, we still have a lot, lot of things to do, but uh, so far it's been pretty OK, and, uh, and I'm sure we can, we can improve it. Oh, it's, uh, it's been a very busy day. We are preparing a Bahrain test. We can't afford to lose time in Bahrain. In Bahrain, we absolutely need to be there and ready and uh, maximize the number of kilometers we can do. If you just judge it from a pure logical point of view, we were crazy two years ago thinking that we would have had this power unit running because there was so much uh, uh, to develop in terms of technology. There were not part available on the, on the shelf on the market. But you know, it's having two years in front, two or three years in front of you, we, we thought we could have <laughs> change the world. So we started and very conscious of how, how difficult it was, but never thinking about how really difficult it would have been then. And I would say now that you are very close, probably if you had other two years, it won't be enough <laughs> to be 100% sure. Every day I'm going to work, happy to go to work. I'm looking forward to enter the company, having the chance to to do what you love, what you started to study for, it's, I'm lucky, I would say. So it doesn't cost me too much to stay long at work. On they go to Bahrain for the final two tests. More miles on the clock, more things learned. Others falter. Ferrari's power unit remains reliable. It's been a long journey. When you work for Ferrari, uh Obviously, the, the passion is really what, what you've got inside. And um, you, you know at what time you start in the morning, you never know at what time you finish in the evening. If you walk in our facility, if you see our people from their faces, even if all the people are tired, you can see that we are all proud and happy to be involved in such an important project. I think that we are really, really lucky to be part of that company, to be part of that sport. Uh, because really we are enjoying our days here working in Ferrari. We know that we are a part of this group and uh, we know the responsibility that we have and of course we want to we want Ferrari to be at the number one position every time. I think looking back over the last few months the, the whole team should be incredibly proud of what they've been able to do so far. 30, yeah. When we started all this, because the old engine was frozen and we were trying to save money, we, 
you know, we've had to build a new team. So from a, a personal managerial aspect, it's been delightful growing a team of brilliant, brilliant people who were so much fun to work with and have really grown into the new engine. So there's a um, human managerial aspect which has been very rewarding. A lot of it goes unnoticed, to be honest. The, the hours, the effort, the out of hours work, the constant and relentless push that the team have towards bringing more and more performance and improvements in the fuels and oils is yeah, it's incredibly impressive. And like all things that you put hard work into, you know, they have a value and you appreciate the value of things that you work hard for, I think. I think that, uh, you know, the challenge of next year is incredible, uh, both from the technical and the sporting point of view. And, uh, you know, if we can summarize with the word, it's really radical. To develop a car and a technology that has been never used before in Formula One in uh, 12 days of testing. This has been uh, an amazing work. For three years, this has been an adventure. To reach this point, the free spirit of invention has run as a partner, a co-driver to the clear reason of pure science. Dreams and engineering in a race to be here, to be on the starting grid of the new age of Formula One. But it is just that, the start. What will come next? I think there's a lot of places that we can improve and uh, we'll be surprised how fast we can go with the cars today. Our aim is uh, to fight for the championship and our aim is to, to win the Formula One World Championship. There is no other thing I will lie if I say something different. We are Ferrari, we have to, to deliver always. People expect a lot from us and uh, we are ready to, to do so. When the lights go out, the strident symphony begins. <laughs>